Now let's talk about the next phase, right? So right now we have everything blocked out. A lot of them, of the pieces are really good. I mean, maybe they're gonna add, we're gonna add a couple more pieces here and there. But I think mainly, you know, the rough size proportions and everything are pretty well laid out. Also, everything has been taken into account to have proper functionality when it comes to like gameplay elements, etc. Okay. So now we come to the point where we start need to make a high poly and low poly, right? So just like a little recap, if you're not familiar with this. So the game industry, pretty much based on the limitations that you have to render either 30 or 60 frames per second, you really need to be very efficient with your geometry, right? So this will be a classic example where you're going to have a model that is going to be really high res geometry, right? But then through a normal map, that is a texture that it captures all the information of the high poly model and transfers it to the a lower version, uh, a lower poly model. Okay. So as you can see, this one is 1800,000 polygons and this one is 1370 polygons. And they pretty much look the same in all, I mean, in a lot of areas, for example, here, of course, it looks different, but all of this like smaller detail that has been modeled that it doesn't exist here, you can actually see it in the final model and it's because of the normal map. Okay, so here's a couple of more examples, right? So we have this guy, for example, you now this scope, same thing, really high res, you know, 373,000 polygons, right? With all these tiny details and everything. Here you have the low poly version, right? Where it doesn't have any of those details, as you can see. And then here you have that same low poly, right? With a normal map applied. And the normal map is the one that captures all this information. And then it looks pretty much the same, the low poly as a high poly. But in the game engine, now we don't have to put this really complicated model. We just put this one that is way lighter. Okay. So this is the, the common way we do things nowadays in games. But now with the latest reveals for the next generation of consoles, there's always like a big step up in, um, at least for, from the creative standpoint, that our tools are gonna become more efficient and they're gonna have also more freedom to do things because now limitations that we had regarding textures, now the size of textures are gonna be bigger. A big thing that is gonna happen is the amount of geometry we can put in the game. So now, you're going to be able to put more geometry at the same time we have to be careful right because even though we're going to have the possibility to add more polygons into our scene in newer games still those models have to go through a process of for example you still need to grab and this character still needs to be rigged still needs to be animated still needs to be able to be editable in maya in real time so you cannot get too crazy with how um heavy it can be so this workflow of high poly to low poly is still going to persist in the next generation of um of consoles so it's important to be very clear about what it does and how to do it okay so in this case i'm just going to do a very simple uh example here in maya just to give you an idea of how these things work right so let's say you have a cube okay and then you have that same cube, but this cube, I'm gonna isolate it. I'm gonna do all the edges. I'm gonna do shift, right click, bevel. I'm gonna do, sorry, point, let's say 15 segments, like several segments, and I'm gonna do chamfer off. Sorry, on. Let me, wait, why is it? Let me just change here to. Uh, metering, no. Okay, let's say I do this, the depth, let's make it like this. So it's actually round. I actually put like a lot, right? So it's really smooth. Now let's do shift, right click, soften edge. Now I'm gonna go control one and then select these two, go right click. And let's create a new material. Let's call it a blend. And just like I want to see the highlights. So it's easier to see high poly things when you have the highlight. I'm going to move this one to the side. 
I'm going to hide this one. So this is our high poly model, right? This is a cube that is 500 and almost 600 uh, triangles, right? And it's super nice and smooth, right? And the whole purpose of the low poly to high poly workflow is that I'm going to go shift control H to unhide my uh, low poly. And is that from each normal, so each face has a normal, right? If I go here and go select my faces, shift right click, face normals, toggle face normal display, you actually see that little green line, as you can see here. So that is the normal that is pointing out of this polygon. So what it does right now, when you do the process of baking is that this low poly, this face is going to start like shooting rays in this direction and also in the opposite direction, but facing the normals, right? So in this case, up and down, and it's going to, whatever geometry finds out in the, that, like those rays touches, then that information is going to bake it into, like write it into a normal map. So in this case, what it's going to be doing is mostly in the corners here is going to realize, okay, you know what? Here is where a corner starts, right? Like this bevel that we done here. So it's going to bake all that information into the normal map. And then when you apply the normal map to the low poly, then it's going to fake this bend. You know, it's going to fake that. It's going to change the normals, like direction here that you have straight up. It's going to change it to simulate this high poly detail, okay? But it's based on the position, right? So this cube has to be pretty much intersecting with this cube so the faces actually can find the geometry of the high poly. So that's a little bit what we're gonna do. So the main difference that we're gonna do with this model, uh, taking into account how uh, current gen and future gen uh, game engines are gonna work, is that our, high, our low poly is probably not going to be as low, right? It's not going to be so low poly in comparison, but definitely we're still going to have to do the bake to make sure that we have a properly optimized model to work uh, in current game engines and in future game engines. So that's more or less the gist of it of how high poly to low poly workflow works, okay? So of course, when we get into the UVs and everything, there's a little bit more technicalities that we have to take into account. But just that is important to remember. You know, there's like little basic idea of how these things work. Okay, so literally right now, I mean, we have this, right? But we can have, you know, a for example, a cylinder or something here that sticks out. Let's say we have this, right? So right now we did the bake, you know of these two transfer all that information to this low poly, this, you know, would actually be written into that normal map. So you can literally have tons of complexity, right? So for example, as you can see here in this image, you have the low poly here. You have all these little grooves and everything for this dial. They're non-existent here, but here they actually show in the normal map. So you can have tons of detail that you can actually put in the normal map that is going to show in your low poly model. Okay, so just remember that. And for this a specific case, what we're going to do is make sure that we put a lot of detail that more or less would be the one, the amount of detail that we're going to use in next generation consoles. Okay, also here's another concern that it's important to know in the beginning before we start adding all this detail and start modeling the high poly, right? And that is that there's a lot of things, a lot of um, parts and mechanical details that we can do with textures. So it's important to know when to model something and when to do that detail with texturing. Because a lot of the times modeling a piece like this would take it considerably uh, longer than actually just using an alpha and painting this in a substance painter, okay? So usually what the way I choose what to model and what not, because this is like a really good example of like everything here has been done with alphas, you know, with just plain texturing. Here, nothing is modeled except the main 
groups. So as you can see, I'll really like to show this video because again, it's a good, perfect example of how something complex like that, to model something like this, to make it perfectly a panel like this with all the grid and everything, would take us a long time to make uh, in Maya and also to perfectly blend it, you know, to have the perfect shape against the circle with that curvature. So some things would be way easier to just do them like this, you know, in Painter with Alphas. And in this case, we even have displacement, right? And displacement is like the capacity to subdivide your geometry, that is tessellation, and then push this geometry out based on textures. But the main uh, reason to choose between something and decide to, if you're gonna model it, or you're actually gonna do it with textures, I say mostly it is about the silhouette. So for example here, right? So this is the actual model, right? So as you can see, it's super smooth and everything. And then here you have everything that has been textured and applied with alphas. So I would say if it's something kind of shallow, that it doesn't have a lot of depth and that it doesn't affect the silhouette, I recommend that you do it only with textures. Do not spend time modeling all those things because again, this, if you make a high poly with all these rivets and everything, is gonna and you do the the bake to the low poly it's gonna look exactly the same as if you go in substance painter and just paint with an alpha all those rivets the big difference is time that so you're gonna spend a lot of time in maya in 3d making all the all that detail and if you have to make adjustments you have to make adjustments in 3d which are it takes longer i suppose to you know what i'm just gonna like like erase that brush that paintbrush that stroke and then paint another uh, like ribbit here, etc. So it's going to be much faster to iterate. But not only that, like the main thing is here that if it doesn't affect the silhouette, I would try to av uh, to avoid making it with geometry. Again, it's never like a hundred percent rule that in that case, if it doesn't affect the silhouette, make it with the texture. But following that, it really helps you have a more streamlined process where. The modeling sticks to modeling and then all this finer detail that it doesn't affect the silhouette we can make it way faster in painter and then we can like do adjustments and everything faster so that would be the thing to have in mind so now that you know this this is going to be a little bit the way we're going to tackle right now that we're going to make our high poly and some of the decisions that we're going to make so for example here's my model right and if we look at the reference for example right all these panels here, if I wanted to do this panel for real, then I would have to actually cut into the piece, right, with multi cuts, then cut again, make a bevel, that bevel, like sink it in. And then I will have this all this amount of geometry here. Then I will have to blend that geometry, all those multi cuts, target weld them to here to this original big piece. And that would be a lot of time, right? And then even the smoothing would be tricky because when you do all those multi-cuts, they're being like projected all across my surface and then I will have to weld them. That would be one way, path A. Now let's talk about path B. Path B, I just make this piece, okay? And literally in Painter, what I'm gonna do is just with a black line, I'm gonna paint this, and that is going to be, I mean, when we do Painter, where it's going to be very clear, but we do a height map, and that is going to push it into the normal map, and boom, you're done. So this, something like this, is going to be way easier to do, and it's really narrow, as you can see. Sorry, it doesn't have a lot of depth. It doesn't affect the silhouette either. So this kind of paneling, we're going to make it through textures. This one, uh, it's a maybe. I think probably this one I'm going to model because this if I model it, then I'm actually going to have uh, light and shadow information where the light actually goes into this uh, little um, the little slots. Uh, this paneling. Okay, and here, okay, here's going to be another question. If we're thinking only on visuals, maybe some things would work. But if we think of functionality, maybe some things actually you think like, you know what, this one I should just texture it. But if you think of functionality, this actually maybe I need to model it because the classic thing uh, for planes when they want to slow down you have the flaps you know that these things like rise up to have some wind resistance so again if I'm thinking functionality then this I want it to be able so when I break for this to be animated and just like actually rotate up 
So then this one, I actually need to model, even though visually it looks like texturing would be the choice, but because of the functionality, this one, I'm actually going to need to model it separately. Okay. Uh, what other example? So for example, again, this paneling here is going to be done with texture. Um, this one's, I think it depends, you know, because if they're really narrow like this, uh, I mean, this one's, they create a little bit of shadow, so I'm okay. Probably I'm going to model them. If they were really, really narrow, then probably I would not model them. What else? This one's probably is going to be textured. This one's, this one is very similar. So I think this one is deeper. Clearly you can see into this, but this one's, I'm not sure this one, maybe I'll do it with, um, with textures, I'm not entirely sure, but this paneling definitely is going to be uh, through textures. Here, there's not a lot of things going on. For example, this, if I make the seat as flat as this, probably this one's will be done with textures. So yeah, just like just something to keep in mind to make sure that we make the right decisions on what to model and what not to model.